So the, the way the spread works is that you have two different prices. So if you just think about the way a normal trade occurs, it's you have a price where you can buy and you can sell. But if two people agree on the exact same price, by definition a trade is going to occur. Because you both agree on the price and by posting your order you're saying, I'm willing to trade. But in the real market, trading is not continuous. It's broken into pieces. So we have two prices. One is called the ask, and the other is called the bid. The ask is the price that somebody is asking for, but you can really just think of this as your buy price. And somebody is bidding for your business with the sell price, but again, you can think of that for yourself as the sell price. Those are the reasons behind it. Now, when you actually go into the market, you'll notice that there is a spread between the bid and the ask. So right now the euro dollar trades around 122.50. And on average it has a two pip spread. And we reference this fourth digit as the pip. And then you have here, say 122.52. Now, just as an aside, sometimes you'll see brokers quote the fifth decimal. So it'll, it might look like this on the, on the ask. One, 22523 right this one is not a pip this is the pip so these are referenced as micro pips or pipettes or nobody's really agreed on a decent term for it but point is this is the pip and this is what everybody knows when you enter a transaction people often get confused about the spread and how often you have to pay it it's only on entry when you go into the market and you pay, you buy for 122.52. So we'll list the steps. Buy at 52. If I wanted to sell immediately, then I can only sell at 50, which is negative 2. But very importantly, you only pay the spread once. So if I go to one, if I buy at 52, I'm stuck on this price forever. So whether the spread changes from two pips to five pips does not affect my profitability at all. This could drop all the way down to let's say 22.40, and I have this massive loss, and that would give me a loss of negative 12 with a spread of 12. But the spread could go the other way, and it would have zero effect on me, because this is the only price I care about when I exit from a buy trade. If the, if the spread went the other way, this could trade up at 123. So 123.50, I might have a 150 pip spread, but it does not affect me at all. So because this is the only price where I'm going to exit the trade. And if I only care about this price, it's just an instantaneous one-time cost. I go in the market, I pay my negative two, and from that point, everything else is uh, based on this, and I have no more transaction costs from that point. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. How do you calculate profit? So like, just the final, yeah, it's here's actually... what you paid, and here's what you made after this. Right, so your profit is going to be a function of two things how much you bought or sold, and how much the price changed. So let's say that we bought 100,000 euro at 122.50. Okay, and the current price is 122.50. 60. Yeah. Okay, the way you do it is like this. This was 122,500 dollars is what we started with. Actually, let me do this here. We started with 122,500 dollars, and the way we come up with that number is basically One euro, whoops, that's a cent. One euro 
is equal to 122.50. So if you multiply both sides by 100,000, you get 122,500. That's where we started. Where we finish is that the price is 122.60. So we can sell 122,600 dollars, but we paid 122,500. So on that 10 pip difference between 50 and 60, we make 100 dollars, uh -huh. and that's how it's actually calculated. If we only traded a mini lot, then this would be instead of being 122,600, it would be 12,260 minus 12,250. You make a 10 dollar profit. Yeah, but so where does the fact with that transaction cost that we were talking about with the difference between the buy and ask? This is, this is affected because this is the price that you can effectively sell at. So let's go through the transactions from the beginning to the end. So we're going to use these same prices to keep it nice and neat. Yeah. Uh, almost. <laughs> Since I changed our entry to 122.50. So we buy at one. 22.50 when market at 122.48 at 122.50. So when you quote a price, usually you use at. So you say the market's at 122.48 at 122.50. So what does that mean? So that means the buy and the ask. Yeah, the bid and the ask. Yeah. Exactly. So this is telling me the difference. And this is giving me an idea of not just where I can sell and where I can buy, but also the spread. And so that, that's kind of like a current snapshot of the market? It is a snapshot. So when we buy 122.50, we're floating an instantaneous loss of two pips. Okay. Okay. Which is effectively a cost. And when we go to sell at 122.60, when the market is at 122.60 at 122.62. Oh, okay. So we do this and we do this, and you can see that there's a drag on the performance. Yeah. These, uh, uh, Even though like that 122.62 might be the current price at the time, because that's if you wanted to buy it again, that's the current price. But that's totally irrelevant for us needing to sell again. So where does the broker get their money? Okay, so when you actually see the price, uh, let me try and write this big. Okay, and I'll try and write this in black. Okay, the way the broker makes their money is they're showing you a marked up spread. So we're trading 122.48 at 122.50. Okay, this is a two pip spread. But the broker's not actually receiving this from the market. They might have something like uh, 122.48.5 at 122.49.5. So they get this from the interbank market. So the huge banks in the world, the Goldman Sachs, Commerce Bank, Royal Bank of Scotland, they are offering these kind of spreads. And then because everybody that has a brokerage account is a small fish in the grand scheme of things, then the broker charges this markup as a service. So when you buy at 122.50, the broker instantaneously sells this to you at 122.50 and only has to buy it back at 122.49.5. So in this case, they make half a pip risk-free because it's instantaneous. Mm -hmm. They take zero risk on this trade. And that's how they, so they're just sucking yeah. small penny, not even pennies, fractions of fractions of a fraction of a penny out of the market all the time. But when you're trading millions of euros at a time, it adds up very quickly.